Thousands of migrants are stranded in Serbia after Hungary declared a state of emergency and introduced tough new rules to secure its border. The southern crossing is now lined by a razor wire fence and work is starting on another fence on its border with Romania. Joining us from Warwick University is Dr. Dalal Stevens, an expert on refugee and asylum law. Thank you for joining us on Sky News this afternoon. Uh, it does appear at good first afternoon. glimpse, good afternoon, that Germany uh, is responsible for so many thousands of migrants desperate to move and migrate to that country. How fair is that? I think it is rather unfair. I've just returned from Greece where we've been interviewing people crossing the Mediterranean and it's quite clear that there have been numbers uh, coming over for some time now. The conditions have got so bad in the neighbouring countries such as uh, Turkey and in Lebanon and Jordan because aid is drying up and when we've had the conversations with them asking them why they're moving now it's quite clear that they have tried to stay in the region but actually they're running out of money completely and they really just feel that there is no other option than to start moving. Now, the challenge for Hungary, presumably, is the fundamental right to seek asylum by those that are fleeing across uh, that country, as opposed to the, the right to control its borders. And we've seen the clashes that have resulted um, because of that. Yes, that's right. I mean, at the, at the moment, Hungary uh, seems to be adopting the view that it is acting as the border to the European Union. But in so doing, of course, and, and uh, not a, allowing people to cross its border, it's just forcing them back onto other countries such as Serbia. And the question I have is how far is this going to go on? Because ultimately they could be in breach of uh, a fundamental principle of the Refugee Convention, which is about not forcing back people to countries where they may face persecution, torture or death. And even if they are expecting them to return to Greece, of course, Greece is a country facing austerity and really is not in a position to cope with the, the number of people coming in. So I think the call by Angela Merkel is correct, that Europe has to really look at solving this together, act in solidarity. And in fact, we could say it is actually a global crisis and uh, countries from around the world should be actually engaging in this and offering to take in refugees as well. One of the issues for another of the issues for Hungary is uh, the difference between economic economic migrants and uh, refugees who are fleeing for their lives and uh, Hungary doesn't have a good record on allowing refugees into the country to stay for any significant amount of time does it? Well, no, and, and it, if anybody does apply for asylum there, they've stated this morning that they will regard very few as refugees um, and actually return them to Serbia, which it is regarding as safe. But if it were to, to actually enact the uh, principles of the common European asylum system, it should actually look at the cases properly and determine whether somebody is a refugee or not. And so they're perfectly entitled to do that. But what we want to see is a fair process, asylum seekers being given access to such a determination process and proper and effective decisions being taken without allowing people or forcing people to return back to countries where they could face death or persecution. One of the challenges is that when people see these uh, images from the borders as people try to get to Germany, to France and perhaps also to the United Kingdom, although less so it would appear, uh, many of the people there seem to be young men on their own and when we've spoken to some of them they say they're from Pakistan or, or other such countries and that's where the ch one of the challenges lies for Europe. I think so. And this has been an issue for some time. It's called a mixed migration, um, where you will have refugees, asylum seekers and other people that we might broadly determine as economic migrants. But I think an attempt to make this sound as if it's completely black and white is not correct. So there are a number of people who one might perceive as economic migrants, but there are circumstances in their countries too, which would actually uh, give, give them an opportunity to apply for protection. So, for example, Eritrea has been signed cited as somewhere where people were coming from and determined to be migrants, but actually there are conditions in Eritrea which would uh, permit people to actually make a successful application for humanitarian protection. So it's not so straightforward as to just decide that actually they will have no claim whatsoever for refugee status or humanitarian protection. But states are entitled to examine the cases properly and decide who is actually an economic migrant and, and a refugee and, and uh, obviously grant those who need the protection the actual protection under the Refugee Convention.
wonder if I might just ask you one more question before we let you go, and that is we know that Angela Merkel uh, has asked other European Union countries to meet next week to talk about the migration crisis. What do you think should be on the agenda? Well, unfortunately, they've obviously had quite a number of meetings now and they don't seem able to decide this core issue, which is whether it is to be voluntary or um, a fixed quota of people being accepted into various countries. And until they get over that hurdle, I can't see or I'm not so optimistic that they're going to succeed next week. Uh, you know, the, so far, we haven't really had a great advance on that, and it does require states to actually accept a, a, a fair number of people if they are going to make any movement on this issue. Good to talk to you. Thanks for joining us. Come back soon. Thank you.